Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. So glad to have you here as we are kicking off our day together. We're taking one step forward, one step in our relationship with God, one step of being intentional, uh, learning about Him, learning from Him, and putting it into practice. Uh, so today we're in chapter 7. We've been studying this this Old Testament prophet. Uh, so much of <laughs> what he's uh, pointing to is the coming of the Messiah, the Savior, and uh, today it's actually not so much to do with, uh, it's not a specific prophecy about Jesus, uh, but it's a uh, reminder about why they're doing the things they're doing. So, so let me read in Zechariah chapter 7. Um, <clears throat> it says this, on December 7th, the fourth year of King Darius's reign, another message came to Zechariah from the Lord. The people of Betha, Bethel had sent uh, Shazir and Rege. Rege- Regemelech, that's that's a tough one. Uh, along and I know I didn't even get that one right. So along with their attendants, I'm glad they didn't mention the names of all their attendants to seek the Lord's favor. They were to ask this question of the prophets and the priests of the temple of the Lords of Heaven's armies: Should we continue to mourn and fast each summer on the anniversary of the temple's destruction, as we have done for so many years? So the question was uh, just ever since they had been conquered seventy plus years prior. Uh, when the temple was destroyed, when Jerusalem was sacked, on the anniversary of that every year, they had been having a period of, of fasting, uh, of prayer, of mourning. And now that they're back in the land, now that sacrifices are starting to take place in the temple, should they stop doing this? Just a question. God's response is important, though. The Lord of Heaven's army sent this message in reply. Say to all your people and your priests, During these 70 years of exile, when you fasted and mourned in the summer and early autumn, was it really for me that you were fasting? And even now, in your holy festivals, aren't you eating and drinking just to please yourselves? Isn't this the same message the Lord proclaimed through the prophets in years past when Jerusalem and the towns of Judah were bustling with people, and the Jeb and the foothills of Judah were well populated? (laughs) He says, who are you guys doing this for? What, What are your motives here? You guys have been... Your issue in the past hasn't been holding fasts and festivals and doing the religious things. Uh, You guys have done this for centuries. You've come and you've made sacrifices. You've come and held the feasts. Uh, You've done your fasts. But were you doing it for yourself or were you doing it for me? The heart matters. And essentially what God is saying is, I I really don't care so much about what you're doing. I want to know why you're doing it. And more importantly than that, I want to know what it leads to. If you go through a period of, of fasting, of prayer, there should be some action steps coming out of that. There should be something that if you're really seeking after God, he's going to reveal something to you, something to work on, something to change, something to, to lean into. There should be an action step coming out of, out of time with the Lord. So this is what he says. He says, then this message came to Zechariah from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. Judge fairly. Show mercy and kindness to one another. Do not oppress widows, orphans, and foreigners, and the poor, and do not scheme against others. Your ancestors refused to listen to this message. They stubbornly turned away and put their fingers in their ears to keep from hearing. They made their hearts as hard as stone so they could not hear the instructions or messages from the Lord of Heaven's armies that He had sent to them through His Spirit through the earlier prophets. That is why the Lord of Heaven's armies was so angry with them. Since they refused to listen when I called to them, I would not listen when they called to me, said the Lord of Heaven's armies. As a whirlwind, I scattered them among the distant nations where they lived as strangers. Their land became so desolate that no one even traveled through it. They turned their pleasant land into a desert. He's just reminding them, hey, it's about putting into practice what I've told you to. At the very basic you know, show mercy and kindness to one another. Do not oppress the widows and the orphans and the poor and the foreigners. Don't scheme against each other. Uh, all these fast, all these celebrations are, they're fine. I mean, that, that's great, these religious acts, but if it's not leading to you actually putting into practice what I've asked you to do, then it's hollow. It, it, it's empty. I, I don't care about those things. Uh, famously, in a quote from, from one of the prophets uh, is, I... I I desire your hearts more than sacrifice. I desire obedience greater than than sacrifice. You can make all the sacrifices you want, but if you're not willing to put into action what I've asked you to do, just just don't. Just don't. And it's just a great reminder for us that we we can spend tons of time in God's Word, tons of time in prayer. 
at tons of times in 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 church. Uh, but if we're not living it out, if we're not putting into practice what God has called us to do, if we just go to church and listen to the message and sing the songs and go home, but but don't engage and don't be part of the family and don't sing and contribute, if we don't live out our faith and and put into practice, and not that we're going to be perfect, uh, but that we're trying to implement what God has called us to do, that we're over time becoming more patient, more loving, more joyful. All the fruits of the Spirit are, are coming out in our lives because it leads to action. Uh, God wants the motives to be right. God wants us to worship Him, to do these things that He's asked us. To, he's not saying that the temple stuff is not important. He's like, oh no, don't do sacrifices anymore. Don't, don't worship anymore. Stop fasting. No, but do it with the right heart. Do it because you love me. Do it because you want to honor me. Do it because you're living this out, not just be in place of. I'm going to fast instead of taking care of my neighbor. No, 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 no. Go ahead and fast and take care of your neighbor. Go ahead and hold this, this, this ritual, this, uh, this festival, and, and honor me during that, and take care of the poor and the oppressed, and make sure you don't cause arguments among yourself. It, it needs to be both to really honor me. All right, let, let's go ahead and pause there. Let's, let's put a, a pin in that for today. Um, we're going to spend some time in prayer as we're, we're kicking off our day together. So uh, it's Wednesday, uh, which means it's, it's about invitations. It's about invitations, about inviting people to meet Jesus. And who's that person for you? Uh, I mentioned yesterday we've got a big invitation uh, campaign going out in Buckeye this weekend with the Glow on Monroe. We've got invite cards. Who are you passing those out to? Who's that one person? Uh, that you want to get to come to Christmas services with you. Or even better than that, sometime to church before Christmas services. Or even better than that, have a conversation with them about Jesus personally. Uh, extend that invitation. However the Holy Spirit guides you in that moment, be obedient, but be bold. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much just for the opportunity we have to, uh, to, to, to follow you. And God, just this reminder today, that so easily we can get into the practice of, uh, of ritual. We, we can make things a ritual. We can do things without even thinking about why we're doing them. Uh, good things, things like reading your word, things like prayer, things like going to church. But God, we, we want to be transformed by you. We want to be transformed through these acts. We want to surrender through these acts because we want you to change us from the inside out. Uh, we we want to come with a posture of humility. And God, help us to live out what you've put in us in these moments. Help us to put it into practice. And God, as we, we get close to Christmas here, we know that there are so many people that um, are more receptive to an invitation this time of year than, than any other point of the year. God, that, that Christmas, even if people are far from God, they, they recognize there's a connection to you, uh, to the birth of Jesus. And God, we pray that they're they're curious. They want to know the whole story. Maybe something's happened in their life this year. Maybe they've gone through a difficult situation. Maybe they've had kids or gotten married or moved to the new area. Something's happened in their life and they're, they're looking for something different. God, I pray for all those invitations, thousands, tens of thousands of invitations going out across the West Valley here. Uh, God, we pray that your house might be full and that we would be able to share the gospel from the street all the way to the seat, demonstrating it with love demonstrating it with hospitality, and then preaching it with your word. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.